This video is going to focus on using exponent rules to simplify expressions. And the three types of problems we're going to work in this video are below. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first type of problem. A rectangular prism has a width of y inches and a length of xy squared inches and a height of x squared inches. Which expression represents the volume in cubic inches of this rectangular prism? So the problem's got quite a few parts to it. It tells us the width is y, it tells us the length is x, y squared, and the height is x, x squared, excuse me. And it wants us to find the volume. So a key word in this problem is the word volume, and it tells us of a rectangular prism. So the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. And that's the volume. So if we knew the length, the width, and the height, we could find the volume of our prism. And luckily we do. So we know the length is x squared y, or excuse me, xy squared. So we're going to write xy squared times, I'll use a little dot for the times, the width is y times the height, see the height is x squared. So we're going to write height x squared. Now we can use our exponent rules that says if we multiply two of the same bases, we add the exponents. There's also another part of your rules about multiplication says we can change the order of the multiplication. So we can actually multiply the x times the x squared first. So x times x squared is x to the first times x squared or x to the 1 plus 2, which is x to the third. So we're going to add the 1 and the 2 together. We have y squared and y to the first. That's going to give us y to the 2 plus 1, since it's y to the first, or y to the third. So looking through our answer choices, we're looking for x to the third, y to the third, and we see that answer choice j fits. Our second question is going to tell us that we have a circle that has a radius of 5x to the 7th, y to the 4th dm, or decimeters. And we know that the area of a circle could be found using this formula right here. It wants us to find the area of our circle in square centimeters. That is definitely a typo. We're not going to make it that hard. Square decimeters. So, looking at our problem, we know we have a formula for area, and area is pi r squared. So our area is pi times the radius squared. If we have the radius, then we can find the area, and we are given the radius. So the area is going to be pi times the radius. I'll put parentheses around the radius. 5x to the 7th y to the 4th. I use parentheses around the radius so I can contain it all as one term. So 5x to the 7th y to the 4th. And notice there's a squared outside of the radius. All of this is the radius and there's a squared on the outside. Our exponent rules tells us that when we have an exponent outside the parentheses, it multiplies by all of the exponents inside the parentheses. So we have 5 to the 1st, x to the 7th, y to the 4th. And the 2 is going to multiply by all of those exponents inside the parentheses. This is going to give us pi times 5 to the 1 times 2, or 5 squared. x to the 7 times 2, or x to the 14th. And y to the 4 times 2, or y to the 8th. And that's supposed to be a 4 right there. So we're going to look at an answer choice and see if we can find an answer choice that has pi times 5 squared x to the 14th y to the 8th. Well, x to the 9th y to the 6th isn't going to match. 9, 6 isn't going to match. This one has x to the 14th y to the 8th, x to the 14th y to the 8th. So we just have to figure out whether it's 25 pi or 10 pi. Since it's 5 squared, we know it's going to be 25. which means that answer choice B must be it. Our third type of problem it asks us to simplify an algebraic expression 
which has a lot of bases and exponents and a lot of negative exponents in it. So let's go ahead and start off. We can by start off by reducing the 16 and the 8. Since they're not the same base, we can go ahead and divide them by their common factor. They're both divisible by 8, so we're going to go get 2 over 1. And let's go ahead and move our negative exponents first. x to the fifth is a positive exponent, so we're going to leave it there. y to the negative third, that's a negative exponent, so let's move it down to the bottom. y to the positive third. z to the negative two, that's a negative exponent, so let's move that down to the bottom as well. Make it z to the positive two x, it's going to stay on bottom because it's an x. y squared, it's a positive as well, so it's just going to be y squared. And z to the negative 4, since it has a negative exponent, it's going to move to the top and become z to the positive 4. So we can use our exponent rules, which tells us if we have the same base, top and bottom, we can subtract the exponents. So we have a base of x on top and a base of x on bottom. So we can subtract 5 minus 1, giving us x to the fourth. We have z to the fourth on top and z squared on bottom. So we can do z to the 4 minus 2 or z to the 2. And on the bottom, we have two y's. So we have y to the third and y squared. We can go ahead and add those exponents, giving us y to the 3 plus 2 or y to the fifth. There's a couple of extra practice problems at the end of the video if you'd like some extra practice. If not, you can go ahead and stop the video here. So extra practice problem, it's another one of those circle problems, and you go ahead and pause the video, work it out, press play when you're ready to see the answer. So with this problem, I got answer choice B. By substituting the radius of 6x to the 9th, y to the 5th, in, and then distributing the exponent of 2 to all of the other exponents inside the parentheses. Here's another one of those simplifying problems with negative exponents. Go ahead and pause the video. There's two of these problems, by the way. Go ahead and pause the video, work it out, and press play when you're ready to see the answer. So my first step was to go ahead and reduce the 24 and 36. Both of those were divisible by 12, giving me 2 over 3. x squared stayed on top. y to the negative 1 went down to the bottom, became y to the positive 1 z to the negative 6 went down to the bottom became z to the positive 6. x squared, y, and z to the fifth were all positive, so they stayed on the bottom. Now we're going to look for like terms top and bottom, or like bases. So I have x squared and x squared. Anything divided by itself is 1, so I can pretty much just cross those out top and bottom. I have y to the first times y on the bottom, giving us y to the second, because 1 plus 1 is 2 z to the 6th, z to the 5th is going to give us z to the 6 plus 5, or z to the 11th. And there's one more for you to work out. Go ahead and pause the video and press play when you're ready to see the answer. So for this one, I divided the 25 and 15, reduced it. They were both divisible by 5, give me 5 over 3. And I moved my negative exponents either from top to bottom or bottom to top. And now we notice that we have an a to the eighth on top and an a to the fourth on top. So we can go ahead and add those exponents, giving us a to the twelfth. We have a c to the sixth on top and a c to the fifth on bottom. So we can subtract those exponents, giving us c to the sixth minus five or c to the first. And top and bottom, we have b to the third, which you can cancel out top and bottom, leaving us with five a to the twelfth, c to the first, all over three.